faith which worketh by love. I'm going to read this text from Galatians 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. This is one of the ways that God is perfecting his people. James reasons about Abraham, that his faith wrought with his works, and that by works his faith was made perfect. So we see that the intention of God in giving his people a faith that works is to perfect that faith in his people. The working of faith exercises and strengthens, shapes and sharpens it. And so being perfected. But what is it behind that faith that fuels those works? It's love. Faith which worketh by love. I like the amplified version. It says this for our text. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. A motivating love, one that moves us to action. In any case, whenever, whenever you think about something that someone loves, that is a big motivator in what they do. In all of their works, it, the base of it is what they love that moves them. Our faith, the work of our faith, makes evident what we love, where our desires lie. Now, God has been known to work because of his love. In John three sixteen, it says, He so loved the world that he gave his only son. Brother Matt and Sister Nicole, their text this evening, that the Lord's love is perceived in a work. That he laid his life down. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life. So why is it surprising for us to think that those begotten of God himself will also show their love through their works as well? Amen. I thought about Jacob and his love for Rachel. He worked seven long years because he loved Rachel. And it says, it seemed but a few days because of the great love that he had for her. His love motivated him to labor long and gave him strength to continue to endure the toil. And it produced hope and expectation in him while he was working. His faith, I was considering this amplified version. Jacob's love activated or began the work. It energized his efforts in it. And love helped to express his desires and work out his intentions for the end of receiving what he loved. Amen. In a like manner, then, our love also motivates us and our faith to work. Both our love for God and the love that he has for us. We do love because he first loved us. Yeah. But it also says that the love of Christ constraineth us. That's right. So this is why we have the exhortations in scriptures. Provoke one another unto love. It's because when the brethren are provoked to love, that love in them will provoke them to work. Yes. Another exhortation is to follow after charity. Follow it. Charity will lead out love. It will lead out and provoke a desire in a godly heart to follow and imitate that which is good. That's why Paul spoke of these things in 1 Corinthians. I wanted to read a few verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. The motivating factor was what was missing. All of those works, if they are not wrought in love, count for nothing. So we see that doing something from the wrong motive offers no credit. But we are speaking here about true love. Of course, we know this is not how the world would define this term. We're talking about charity out of a pure heart and a good conscience. Yeah. This is the charity that is the bond of perfectness. Amen. And it will provoke our faith to be put into action. So we'll consider the faith which worketh by love. Amen. Everybody is very, always uh, very concerned with things being practical. Have you noticed that? Yeah. What does that mean to me? 
Well, this is very practical. What avails is faith that worketh by love. That means th- this, is, this is what matters. This is what counts, which means that other things don't. Faith that worketh by love. This is very practical. This is what this is in other words this is what heaven notices. This is what this is what doesn't end at the grave. Yes. Faith that worketh by love. Amen. Another version, I believe it's the New International, it says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. That's a good that's a good way to say it. This is the only thing that counts. I want to spend a, a few moments to define some words here because it's dangerous to let our own experience define the words that the Holy Spirit uses. And I think that happens a lot today. And so people, they, they, they define the words in their own minds, in their own inward parts, the words love and faith and hope and, and uh, words that the Holy Spirit uses, they let their own experience or maybe their, their own culture, they let their own culture define words. But God has defined the words that God uses. In fact, the scripture, I like to say, is its own dictionary and its own encyclopedia. And so you go to the scriptures to learn what the scriptures mean. And so when God uses the word love, God has already already provided a foundation of what love means. And so when the Lamb of God has appeared to take away the sin of the world, well, God, he's already substantiated what Lamb of God means. So the Lord has used both men and women and children throughout Scripture to define words that the truth is, that are going to contain the truth of the gospel. He has used uh, nature in his creation. He's used direct revelation by speaking directly to men or through angels. Uh, He's used uh, the law and the tabernacle and all the services contained in them. He has used uh, promises, miracles, even music. He's used to define words. He's used the prophets to to invest these inspired words with meaning. And so when God says faith, then it's not up to debate. It can't mean one thing for you and another thing for me. Even though men claim to have this freedom, you know, well, that's truth for you, but that's not what that truth is for me. It, it, It doesn't work like that. So when Jesus says, go learn what this meaneth, he's sending men to the scripture. I will have mercy, not sacrifice. He wasn't sending men to the philosophers when he says, go learn what this meaneth. Jesus often said, have you not read in the scriptures? See, the lack of understanding was due to the lack of reading. The lack of familiarity, the lack of knowledge of the scripture. Have you not read? And he, he also answered that deceptive question. Um, well, it wasn't that deceptive of a question. They were conniving in asking the question, you know, about the resurrection. He said, you do err not knowing the scriptures. Yeah, that's right. Is that your problem? You ask the wrong question because you, you don't e- we don't even know the starting point here. So how are we going to get to the finish line? You do err not knowing the scriptures nor, nor the power of God. So the truth can't be contained in my life experience. Yeah. My life experience should be a result of the truth being in my life. My life experience, it's not, it's not a big enough vessel. It's not, it's not holy enough. It's not godly enough to, to be that type of container, to say nothing of the culture and society that we live in. Heavenly vessels, heavenly things need heavenly vessels. Amen. Heavenly things can't, they, they can't be... Um, transmitted they can't be, be be gifted in they have to have the right container this is and the lord has uh, illustrated this heavenly melodies need heavenly voices we might say see how would you how would you know it's a heavenly melody unless it was it was heard by a heavenly voice see if it had the wrong vehicle then it would it would destroy what it was so in the See, in, in a great house, the scripture says there are, there are many vessels, some to honor and some to dishonor. And so the Lord, see, he always uses the right vessel for the right job. Amen. He's not going to use what, 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 what's out back in the shed, so to speak, in the kitchen, and he doesn't take what's out of the, out of the dining room to the back shed. In the great, there are many vessels for many things. And so the Lord, he's gonna, he uses the right words for, for the right 
for the right jobs. There are, there are uh, sacred words. There are common words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are all different kinds. So see, here's an example of this. The Lord, the Lord sent a word of salvation to Noah for preparation for the flood that he himself would send. See, he didn't, he didn't use another, another means to reveal. He, he revealed it, and he, he, sent, he revealed the flood, he sent the flood. I mean, he revealed the salvation from the flood, and he sent the flood. Another example is God sent seven years of plenty in Joseph's day. He sent the seven years of famine, and he sent Joseph. Mm -hmm. See, so when the, Lord, the Lord's going to send the gospel, so he sends, he, sent, he, he creates these, these words, these containers that are, that are suitable, capable, and fitting for the words that are going to be used to preach the gospel to men. they got to be the right, the right words. And I'm not, I'm not trying to trump something up and make something out of nothing here because it, the, word, the, the truth of the gospel is being preached in words. I, I believe that the, our, our society, our culture, has, has worked, has, has been been victimized in the, the meaning and the power of words being robbed from them. The la language has actually been, like, attacked. <clears throat> Here's another example. God gave the pattern to build the tabernacle to Moses, and then God gave the wisdom to build the things in it, and it was built to serve God. So it all, it all came from him. So God defines the words that God uses. Now, we all know that the word faith can mean 10 different things to 10 different people. When somebody hears the word or says the word faith, there's all kinds of things that are internally attached to that word. And so when this man says faith, he thinks that you, or he hopes, <laughs> he hopes that you mean the same thing he means. The word love, can, it, it can have a whole bag, it probably does, have a whole bag full of presumptions and assumptions tied to it, particularly in religious settings. I think, I think religious settings are like world-leading in presumption. I really do. So they, they, everybody hopes that you have the same bag that they do, and, and if you don't have the same bag, then they just, they just write you off. Sometimes they, we don't want them to, but... So I want, I want to spend a little bit of time now def defining faith. The text is faith worketh by love, and that's what counts. Mm -hmm. The context is that he's contrasting circumcision. Mm -hmm. That's what he, circumcision nor uncircumcision, but faith that worketh by love. And so let's spend a moment to define faith. Of course, you have to go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, let me connect that text with my text. Now, what avails is the substance of things hoped for that works by love. The substance of things hoped for does work. It's productive and it's fruitful. The substance of things hoped for, it, it produces something in you. It moves people to, to do something. And the evidence of things not seen worketh by love. That's what avails. The evidence of things not, not seen it's it's active. You can't you nobody has this substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen and it just lie dormant or at least they won't have it long if it lies dormant. So in giving faith, God is giving men substance. He gives faith. Faith comes. That's what it means. That's the that's like our experience faith in, in having faith is that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. From the from God's perspective, he gives. That's why it, that's why it comes right. is because he gives. So when God gives faith, he's giving substance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's substance of things hoped for. Right. Why was why is there something hoped for? Because God promised. So God is giving the substance in faith and giving faith, he's giving the substance of the things he that he promised. I see a consistency here. That's right. Is it, you see, God, re, God gave the pattern for the tabernacle. God gave the wisdom to build the tabernacle. And it was all made to offer him sacrifices. So truly, all things are from him, to him, and for him. Yeah. So when God gives faith, he's giving the substance of the thing he promised. That's right. mm -hmm. And then only by faith is a man accepted uh -huh. by God. Yeah. See how all these things fit together. Amen. And it's faith that worketh by love. So faith and hope are always found together. Mm -hmm. So there are things in nature that are always found together. 
Like you can't have, you can't, you don't find this element without this element because they're dependent mm-hmm. on each other. You see, you ever seen like satellite pictures of a, of a desert and where there's, or any type of arid, you know, uh, landscape where there's a, where there's water running through, there's a stream, winding stream, mm-hmm. water feeding through this land. And there's, there's green life all around and, and the green life never does depart from the water. It, it, it goes right where the water goes. Amen. Because where there's water, there's life. Yeah. Where there's faith, there's hope. Amen. There is no hope outside of faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. So when God gives faith, he's giving a portion of what he promised. Substance of things hoped for. So living by faith. What it is to live by faith. See, here's an example of I, wh- what I'm talking about, why I'm defining this, is because people have too small of a container uh-huh. when, they, when they think about what faith is. Yeah. To some people, I have to live by faith because I don't have enough money to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. Now, faith does work in that area too. I'm not trying to steal that from you, yeah. Yeah. but I'm saying faith is a lot bigger than being able to pay your bills. Amen. It's got to be, it's, it has to be a, where if we are it, saved by grace through faith, it's got to be more than writing checks to pay the bills. So living by faith. For we live, we live by faith. What is that? It means that our very life is nourished, we live, by the substance of things hoped for. We live by the substance of things hoped for. And we live by the evidence of things not seen. That means without faith, you die. Amen. Before God. Live by, so it's not a code of ethics. That's not live by. It's not, it's not following the rules. That's not, that's not what the Holy Spirit means when he says live by. He means live by, like nourished by, sustained by. Amen. You are alive by faith living by faith so god god gives promises to draw men that he made a promise to abraham that promise caught his attention see he drew he drew him and god this is how god works he he draws them with bands of love or as also the prophet said he he whistles for them didn't that hosea he said i will whistle for them he draws men if jesus said if i be lifted up i will draw all men. What is it that draws men? Something good. Something appealing. So God draws men with promises, and then God gives faith to the men that are drawn, and that faith is the substance of things hoped for. So God, in, in men responding to God, being drawn, being compelled to God, he's giving them substance of the very thing that drew them. That's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And this is the faith that works by love. So hope that saves, Romans 8 says we are, we are saved by hope. Hope that saves cannot be theory or just imagination. And that, that's another point of error that motivated all these definitions. Is that people, people have this idea, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, whether they decided it for themselves or whether it was like given by osmosis by the people around them, that the, 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 the concept of hope just has to do, it's, it's more like theory. I just, I just hope things get better, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this will work out. And uh, it's, it's, just, it's just a wish. It's, it's something vague. It's something like, like, uh, like vapor, you know, coming off the, the, the steam, off the, out, of the, out of the mug, the hot mug of, of coffee or what. It's, it, it can't get it. It doesn't last. It doesn't sustain. That's not hope that saves. Amen. Hope is, faith is the substance of things hoped for. A hope that sustains and saves and nourishes, it's got to have substance to it. No one's saved by wishing. Hope and wish are not synonyms. Amen. Not the same word. You know, what, te- what song is that? Somebody changed the words of that hymn, you know. It actually says, wistful eye, and they changed it to wishful. Yes. Somebody ought to be brought, you know, taken to task over that. This is not the same word, wistful and wishful. See, there's another attack on language. we got to define, when God says faith, I don't think he means what you say. 
when you say faith. Oh, okay, here's some definition on evidence. Evidence is convincing. I can show you, here's some evidence. See, it convinces. It's surety of witness. It's one thing to say, I know this. It's another thing to say, I know this, and produce evidence. Confirmation of testimony. The word evidence is often used in the court of law. So this, this, is, this is not just bantering about words. Evidence is a very weighty term in the court of law. Evidence ends doubt. A jury trial is to decide what really happened. Drill down through all the nonsense, all the lies, all the mudslinging to find out and decide once and for all what really is the truth. And what do we need? We need evidence. Faith is the evidence Amen. of things not seen. Mm -hmm. So God, ev see, evidence ends doubt. Evidence answers questions. Evidence is proof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your faith is the evidence mm -hmm. of things not seen. Other versions, the newer versions, like New American Standard, New International, they say conviction. They don't use the word evidence. Mm -hmm. They say conviction of things not seen. Now, there was a long time where I... I didn't, I didn't see the connection between evidence and conviction. But what is it that convicts? It's evidence. See, so they, that, that is a good, uh, another good way to say it. Now here, let me contrast this. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. So let me give you a task. Prove that Jesus rose from the dead. I think people have made this too simple of a matter. Prove it. Science. Uh, history, archaeology, whatever, you know, you con contact all of the experts that, that are available. Mm -hmm. Prove that Jesus rose from the dead. I don't think you can do it. No. God didn't show anybody That's right. that Jesus rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. He showed men that he multiplied bread. He showed men that he healed blind men, healed lame men. There's a lot of things that, Jesus, that God showed that Jesus did. He didn't show anybody that he rose from the dead. And there's other things uh, that, are, that, are like, that, that fall in the same category. Just prove that Jesus paid for sins. Mm -hmm. Prove it. How, how would you go about doing that? I have scientific or what, what means would you use to prove that, that Jesus... That's one thing to prove that Jesus died. Another thing to prove he rose from the dead. But another thing to prove that his death and resurrection paid for sins. Yeah, that's right. It's a quite another thing to prove that it bruised the head of the serpent. Mm -hmm. That he overcame the world. How are you going to prove these things? Faith is the evidence yes, of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Faith is what proves it to you. Now think about that. This shouldn't be that difficult to, to come to, to grip to grips with this thing with the, these kind of things but it is difficult here's here's what i've come to grips with i can't convince men of these things i can't prove it with device and with 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 oratory or with science or whatever other tools god can god can convince you that jesus rose from the dead and when you're convinced god saves you now that's a pretty good arrangement isn't it is it worth we're, we're saved by grace through faith and so we can't, when it comes down, where the rubber meets the road, however you want to say it, when it comes down to the real brass tacks, it's got to be the Holy Spirit working to convince men. And he's going to do it with faith, because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I'm not through my introduction yet. <clears throat> so faith is like a spiritual hand that lays hold on eternal life. Moses, here's some examples. Moses had, he had uh, faith and endured seeing him who is invisible. See, so his enduring had to do with seeing him who was invisible, who did not appear. Abraham grew strong in faith, and that was a commentary on the time when he had a promise, but he didn't have any evidence. Or he didn't have, he didn't have the, uh, he, he hadn't received the promise. He had faith, but he hadn't received the promise. And the Holy Spirit says he grew strong in faith and wavered not in unbelief because his faith was the substance of things hoped for. He didn't waver in unbelief because he had the evidence of things not seen, because that's what his faith was. Joshua and Caleb had faith that they would, receive, that they would enter and receive the promised land. They had, they, they'd eaten those grapes, and they themselves had been in that land. They had faith. They believed the promise, 
that, that God had given of the promised land. Okay, let's uh, define love. Sister Barb mentioned this, the, ne- the necessary motive for all living and doing. That's love. It's what validates. Without love, I am nothing. And I'm content to, to, let, to let it lay yeah. at that. And to not add any exceptions. Mm-hmm. Without love, I am nothing. Mm-hmm. So what, what would it be any other way? What would it be to pray to God without loving God? It sounds absurd to even say it. What would it be to study the scriptures but not love the truth? Mm-hmm. What would that avail? Without love, I am nothing. So, so what if there's very disciplined study of the scriptures, but there's no love for the truth. What does that, what does that study, what does it produce? What about serving the church, but not loving the brethren without love? I am nothing. Love never fails. I I like to think in, in, in terms like this, love never fails whether you're in the, on a mountaintop experience in faith or in the valley experience yeah. in faith, love never fails in either experience. Amen. It's not going like, to like, like break down and, oh, it didn't work. Love never fails. Whether you're in a time of peace spiritually or in a time of war spiritually, love won't fail. Yes. It's, never, it's never to your detriment to have love. Never... Love never fails. And whether it's new in Christ, babes in Christ, or whether you're aged in Christ, love never fails. It's, not, it's becoming for the new in Christ, and it's becoming for the aged in Christ. Whether um, in bloody persecution or under friendly fire of smooth words, love never fails in either in either condition and it's also love is the more excellent way it's more excellent than speaking in tongues mm-hmm. yeah. oh that's that could be divisive but that's what paul said it's the more it's more excellent than moving mountains yeah. uh-huh. that's that's not the kind of miracle that you can claim and not prove right <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of a lot of those t- type of claims Love is more excellent than bestowing all your goods to feed the poor. And we're, we're not, we don't discourage anybody from, from feeding the poor. But if it's done without love, you're nothing. Yeah. That's what the Holy Spirit said. So love, of course, is affection. It's desire. It's, long, it's clinging to something. Love. It's, it's delight in. Love is one of the engines of thinking and seeking and doing that moves men. It's love. Now, of course, that love can, can be, it, it can be tainted by sin to where people love the wrong thing. But the Holy Spirit here, he's, he, see, it, it, this is, he's talking about the love of God. Mm-hmm. So whether it be, whether it be a, um, a motive to satisfy an inward desire or a motive of serving and ministering to others, love is a powerful current moving in the inward parts of men, whether it be moving them towards God or whether it be moving them away from God, there's this there's this powerful motive of love that is working in in men. As Brother Fred's famous saying goes, "People do what they want." Yeah. That's a commentary on love. Yeah. Might sound simple, but that's a profound statement. Yes. People, how could they do that? I just don't understand. People do what they want. Amen. That's right. Is they're moved by love. It says it's this this deep inward current that is that's running in in every every man. So we have <clears throat> these um, these uh, phrases in scripture of love the truth, love the brethren, love righteousness, love his appearing, love thy salvation, loving his name, love his testimonies, loving God, love of the Spirit, the love of Christ constraineth us. Love thy law, but then you also have loved darkness. Love vanity. So says David. The love of money, the root of all evil. Love cursing. You you wonder, how could that happen? See, man's created in the image of God, and then they're wasted by sin. So that capacity, 
that is that is is invested in a man wasted by sin then they love the wrong thing so this love this the power of love is is seen in jacob's um, serving for rachel the power of love can be seen in the servant choosing to have his ear pierced and saying i love my master and i love my wife and i love my children and pierced his ear Jeremiah's love for, the Jerusalem, for Jerusalem resulted in his weeping and prayer. David's love for God re- resulted in the, in the Psalms. As Solomon said, this is a, probably the most common wedding text, but it, it shouldn't be limited to just, just marriage. Love is as strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. So here's some, uh, one more attempt at, at uh, definition. Trust is not a synonym for faith. Faith trusts. Kindness is not a synonym for love, although love is kind. So trust doesn't work by kindness. Faith works by love. Uh-huh. See, they're, big, they're bigger. They're bigger words. Mm-hmm. Or even, even, even worse than this. To some people, faith is a body of doctrine. Yeah. And love is a relief ministry. Yeah. So just imagine if Galatians 5, 6 read, it's, what availeth is a body of doctrine working through relief ministry. Mm-hmm. See, people's definition can wreak havoc. Yes. Yes. That's right. Faith and love are both given given to us by God. No one has faith and love by nature. Both are redemptive. Both are saving. No one will enter into the joy of the Lord not having had faith and love. Now to many people today, worship music is what avails. And at all costs, we're going to invest in worship leaders and worship bands. To others, the campus facilities and the campus life uh, family Life Center. Now, that means a gymnasium when they say Family Life Center. That means a basketball court. That, that's what avails. I don't know what basketball has to do with the whole family. But still, other, to others, professionalism and formalities and education, that's what avails. And that's like the key. That is the, if we just have these things, we will be successful because that's what avails. And they pursue it to, to extreme lengths. Now, here's some more subtle but no less dangerous errors. Baptism is what avails. Well, yes, it does avail, but not to the omitting of newness of life. The speaking in tongue avails. But yes, it does, but not to the omission of edifying all. Conversion is what avails. Yes, it does. But not to the starving of the converts after they place their membership. Family life, that's what avails. But it does avail. But but not to the exclusion of reasoning on righteousness and temperance and judgment to come. You have a happy family life, but it's not if it's not sober with righteousness and temperance and judgment to come, then your, your family could actually become a hindrance. That's right. uh-huh. These types of errors tend to eclipse everything else. So then everything, everything in the Scripture can look like it's about the family. Mm. Yeah. Everything in the Scripture can look like it's about praise and worship. Mm. Jesus said to the Pharisees that they would travel land and sea and make one proselyte and in the end they're twofold the son of hell as they are. <clears throat> they did all their works to be seen of men. They loved to be called rabbi. They loved to make long prayers. They gave money to be seen. They had, they, they had actually, they created a religious ego club because they, that's what they thought availed. That, so that's what they sought. That's what they, that's what they pursued. And so in Galatia, it was circumcision. That was the issue. They were being pressed to circumcise. And Paul to be circumcised. Paul exposed the, the errors of these people. He said, they're really doing it so that they can glory in your flesh. It's like another, it's like another notch in the belt. That's what it is. It's, a, it's roster bolstering. Added another number. Our converts. 
That's what it was. And so, Paul, see, this is what Paul's arguing against. It's got to be a strong argument now because, after all, who gave the covenant of circumcision? God did. So you can't just say, that's wrong, and go on. So that's not going to work. God gave circumcision. It's a covenant of circumcision. It was a sign in the flesh. <clears throat> so this was, this was not an honest mistake by people may, uh, with good intentions. These were predatory people. They were enemies of the cross of Christ and of whom Paul said, let them be accursed. Yes. That's how the book of Galatians started. Amen. So Paul didn't like, he, he didn't like put the, you know, he's taking the gloves off, so to speak. And he goes after these people. Yeah. He has no intentions of kindness being leveled toward these people. That's right. mm -hmm. None at all. Now, this is what avails. It counts. This is what is advantageous, is faith working by love. This is what is profitable. Everyone, everyone seems to have this a, a touchstone issue. But this is what, what, whatever it might be. Well, this is God's touchstone issue. Faith that worketh by love. Faith working by love. Is a, it's a kingdom touchstone. We might call it a telltale sign that God has been at work. Where faith is working through love, God's been at work. Because... It, there is no DNA code to manufacture faith and love. It's go, it comes from God or it doesn't come. Amen. Where you find water, there has to be oxygen. Mm -hmm. So see, faith and love are, you might say, interdependent. Heaven takes note of faith working by love. It catches the angel's attention. Where faith works by love, that, that's, where, that's where the angels are looking. Peter says they long to, they, they desire to look into these things. Faith and love, see, they're intrigued by God. So they're intrigued by what God does. So when they see faith and love, they're seeing God and they look. There is no such thing as a faith that doesn't work. I know that this is a common argument, you know, derived from James. You've got to make sure that you work. You can't just, say, you can't just have faith. You've got to work too. Well, that's not a very smart thing to say. There is such a thing as weak faith. There is such a thing as little faith. There's a danger of departing from the faith or erred from the faith, becoming a reprobate concerning the faith, or even overthrown faith. That's a jarring statement. But there's no such thing as vestigial faith, faith that doesn't do anything dormant or non-functional faith when james says i will show thee my faith by my works he's showing he's saying that where there is faith it makes itself known so hebrews 11 is a divine care commentary on the nature of faith what faith does in other words faith doesn't alienate anyone from god faith doesn't make anyone worldly faith does the work of god because it came from god Work is another word that's been abused by church people. In many, in many cases, it, to, it means just converting the lost. That's what work is. It's, con it's converting the lost. Teaching Sunday school, volunteering at the homeless shelter. Church people have, have even thought that Paul and James disagreed with each other on this matter of work. And, I, you know, there's, there's people who think Paul got it wrong, and then there's people who think James got it wrong. Well, I got a message for everybody. They both had it right. Paul said it's without works. James said it's with works. Yeah. You just take it, just technically, that, that's what they said, isn't it? <clears throat> so, so some people preach, you, you, don't, you don't do anything, you just, you just believe and enjoy life and you land in heaven. And other, other people have a gospel of commandments. It's like the gospel of James uh, versus the gospel of Paul. They both preach the same gospel. That's right. Works is evidence. <laughs> works is not the reason. Believing is a work. Amen. Walking in the Spirit is work. <clears throat> Laying hold on eternal life. Yeah. See, this is, these are like the, the activities of faith. This is, what, this is what faith does. We, have, we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. See, the, just the word work is like polarizing. Like, which side of the fence do you land on? The Hebrews letter... Prayed for the Hebrews that well, in the letter the Hebrew letter had this prayer for the Hebrews that God would make them perfect in every good work to do His will. Mm -hmm. He was praying that they have strong faith because faith works by love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul talked to Timothy about uh, 
the sanctified vessel, that it's, it's prepared unto every good work. Good work is, is actually n- never used in a bad sense by God. It is used in a bad sense by, by men. And people even have this, this, uh, this expected connotation in their voice when they say good works. You ever notice that? They say good works. But God never used the, the word like that. It was the father of lies himself that suggested that faith is an opponent of work. It's not. Faith, faith is a, uh, work is a fruit of faith. Amen. Jesus said, my father worketh hitherto, and I work. Is it possible that the Godhead be in a man, and that man be idle? Faith worketh by love. I don't think it's possible to have faith and not have love. There have been people to suggest that religious violence, over, that, that has happened many times in the history of the world, that religious violence has actually been, not, not, not violence against religion, violence produced by religious people. People have tried to explain that as that they had faith, but they didn't have love. I don't think, I don't think faith moves people to murder. Amen. It wasn't faith that moved them. That's right. That's Amen. I don't think it's possible to have faith and not have love. If Jesus is the author and finisher of faith and God is love, I and the Father are one, I don't think it's possible to have love but not have any faith. Like the fire on the, on the altar that the Lord himself lit, and then he prescribed that this, this fire has to be perpetually used. Yeah. Perpetually, it's an eternal fire. Yeah. It has to be maintained. See, that's, that's the nature of faith. God gives faith. God gives love. Now, what God gives is what has to be maintained. Amen. So li- by love does not mean by the rules of love. It's not that work, faith working by love, is that, that love is, is a is a rule keeper, make sure you do this and do that. Is faith is motivated by love. Faith is faith is is animated by love. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> faith is a capable agent of love. Mm-hmm. To, to do mm-hmm. and to, to bear to bear fruit. So I'll, I'll leave you with this thought that the um, well two thoughts. Let me slip one more in. Men, men like to say that the end the end justifies the means, but that, that doesn't work in spiritual matters. Yeah. The, the, the means, see, the means have to be consistent. They, let me say that. That's a better way to say that. The means are consistent in the yeah. kingdom of God uh-huh. with the beginning and the end. That's right. Jesus is the, the alpha and, and the omega. So faith working by love makes his commandments not grievous. Yes. When faith is working by love, then the Lord, he, he's, he's, not, he, he's not pushing people to heaven with threats. He's drawing people to heaven. Faith is working by love. I'll leave you with that. Thank you.